Martin, what are stars? Stars are basically big hydrogen bombs hanging about in space. Um, they're formed when a cloud of hydrogen, and there are these clouds, uh, slowly kind of comes together through gravity and eventually produces a star. The, the mechanism is that the gravity pulls the uh, hydrogen gas in and once the star reaches a kind of critical mass, a nuclear, re a nuclear reaction starts. Now, this uh, reaction is fusion, where the hydrogen nuclei, in other words, the hydrogen um, atoms are being pressed together to the point where the protons that are at the middle of hydrogen atoms are pressed together and fusion happens, nuclear fusion. You've heard of fusion bombs. And when this fusion happens, then effectively the star kind of well, turns into a very large hydrogen bomb. Um, this process of the hydrogen nuclei being pressed together, in other words, the protons, uh, is enabled through two things. One is called the, the uh, strong force in, uh, well, in physics. It's called the strong force. There's a strong force and a weak force. The strong force basically allows two protons that have the same charge, positive charge, to merge together. Because, of course, if they're both positively charged, they're going to repel each other. So how the hell can they come together? Because the electrical force of repulsion is very strong. But the strong force is about 100 times stronger than the electrical force. And so once the, um, the protons at the center of hydrogen atoms get together, or near enough, they are pulled together and you get the release of energy that we see in hydrogen bombs. Now, uh, you need neutrons as well. I'm not going to go into the physics of it too much, but you need uh, neutrons as well. And they come about through the weak force. But, you know, all I'm saying is that the forces exist to allow hydrogen to be converted into helium, which is what happens when the hydrogen nuclei, in other words, the protons, uh, are pressed together, and you end up with a helium atom. And this process goes on for billions of years. Our sun is about 5 billion years old, and it will continue for about another 5 billion, at which point it will become a red giant. And when it becomes a red giant, it will uh, expand to swallow the earth and fry it to a cinder. So that's uh, the basic mechanism of how stars are formed. Now, stars are of various sizes. If a star is very small, their lifetime is effectively infinite. I mean, you know, it isn't infinite in truth, but it is or could be measured in trillions of years which we haven't encountered yet because the universe is only about 13 billion years old. But anyway, small stars, they can just you know, hang around forever, forever more or less. Um, but then again, they don't give very much out. Uh, the very large stars can collapse into some, and by large, I'm talking about maybe tens of, uh, 10 times the size of the sun or more, they can collapse into something called a supernova. There is an intermediate step, step very often called a white dwarf, uh, but they collapse into a supernova and the supernova just spews everything out. And in fact, supernovas are the main factory, if you like, of converting hydrogen into all the elements you see around you, carbon, um, helium, you know, whatever, um, oxygen. 
So you can view stars as a kind of factory. They take in hydrogen. They take in other stuff as well, but that's by the way to some extent. Um, they take in hydrogen and then they pump out a whole pile of different elements. Everything you see from carbon to lead to you know, zinc or whatever, uh, iron, it's all pumped out from stars and particularly supernova. And in fact, our solar system is said to be, uh, or is said to have come about because of the matter that was ejected from a supernova. So, you know, the, the, the trite little saying that people have, we are stardust. Well, we are stardust, but don't get too excited about it. Um, but it all comes out of stars. If there were no stars, all you'd have is basically hydrogen and a few other bits and bobs floating around in the universe. And, um, well, you know, it's a big story, but hopefully I've kind of covered the basics of it there. There are different kinds of stars. And some stars are big enough when they eventually run out of material and collapse. Uh, because it's the nuclear explosion at the center of them that stops them from collapsing. So when they run out of material to fuel that nuclear explosion, uh, they collapse and possibly collapse into a black hole. So uh, it's quite interesting. There are lots of different kinds of stars, but I think I've given a fairly good overview. And finally, the sun is about 5 billion years away from collapsing so you know you don't need to worry about it <laughs>